Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Juno mission and our beautiful Jupiter. In 2017 Juno discovered some of the more incredible findings about this unusual planet and redefined our understanding of it. So let's actually discuss this and welcome to What The Math. So even though uh, Jupiter actually looks very, very incredible in Space Engine, we are probably are going to be using uh, another application known as NASA's Eyes, where we actually get to see the Juno mission and find out exactly what it discovered around the beautiful Jupiter that doesn't look as beautiful in here, unfortunately. Now, first of all, this application is totally free, so you can download and check it, uh, check it out by yourself. But um, what I'm going to focus on are the three very unusual findings that totally blew the scientists away because they thought Jupiter was this, and turns out it's something completely different. Now, you can actually discover a lot of things about this mission by clicking these buttons right here. Like, for example, this shows you the uh, in orbital insertion that occurred uh, back in 2016. And you can go through very specific uh, mission parameters here so depending on the timeline you can actually scroll through and just to see what happened so in short it took about half an hour for the Juno mission to insert into Jupiter's orbit but we're going to go into the science of Jupiter and I want to talk about what we've discovered so far and why it's actually kind of groundbreaking so here you can totally just change uh, any of these parameters and um, look at what Juno discovered now, one of the goals of Juno mission is actually to study the atmosphere of Jupiter. And here, we actually uh, are going to be looking inside the atmosphere and try to find out what's going on um, inside of this beautiful gas giant. If you actually go on YouTube, you can find a video by NASA that shows you a really cool simulation of us flying through upper atmosphere and going inside the uh, red spot of Jupiter. And here it shows you the altitude and also the temperature that's going to pop up here in a second as we fly into this beautiful, very, very scary looking cloud that's also a superstorm, the biggest storm in our solar system. So here the temperature goes up to about uh, 500 degrees Kelvin, which is close to about uh, 200, 300 degrees Celsius. And this is inside the red giant spot of Jupiter. So we're basically studying the interior of the atmosphere and here um, in NASA's eyes, you can kind of sneak a peek at what's going on inside. Now, one of the more unusual discoveries is actually in regards to this right here. So the atmosphere hasn't really been studied very well yet, but we discovered that we thought that there was actually a solid core inside Jupiter, but it turns out that it's very likely not solid at all. It's very likely that it's some sort of a fuzzy, unusual super material that is kind of dissolved and dissolving everything and is not something that we can easily imagine because it simply doesn't exist on Earth because these conditions are really extreme. It's super, super hot here, up to about 10,000 degrees Kelvin. And it also has really ridiculously high pressure of over 2 million atmospheres. So in these conditions, this becomes a completely different material and a completely different type of environment that we just don't understand very well yet. But uh, this was one of the more unusual discoveries. So forget about the solid core. It doesn't seem to exist. Instead, it's a fuzzy core. Material and environment that we just don't really understand very well yet. Okay, so this was the interior of Jupiter. But we also discovered some really cool things on the exterior. Specifically at the polar poles here. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see um, it in this simulation. So I'm going to show you the photo instead. And this is actually what we saw at the northern and southern pole of Jupiter. These unusual chaotic looking cyclones, very similar to hurricanes on Earth, obviously a lot larger in size, but also very chaotic, very random, and basically very unusual looking. As a matter of fact, just the fact that they are on the southern and northern pole is kind of weird to begin with, because on Earth, most of our cyclones ha happen in this area right here. We don't really get much uh, in terms of cyclones and hurricanes or typhoons in the southern and northern pole, but Jupiter does. And it's very unusual that they're so random, 
so beautiful and so crazy looking. So that was actually a very unusual discovery, something that we didn't expect at all. And obviously we have no idea how these are formed and what makes them so unique looking. Well, that's uh, discovery number two and another redefinition of our understanding of this beautiful planet. And the third component that we were really surprised to discover and analyze is this, the aurora. Uh, aurora of Jupiter are something that we thought we understood because we know that it's formed because of the magnetic field, the magnetosphere, but turns out Jupiter's aurora are also very different. As a matter of fact, first of all, they're about 10 times stronger than we anticipated. We thought they were, that uh, th this particular aurora is about 10 times stronger than on Earth, but it turns out that it's like hundreds of times stronger. On top of this, unlike on Earth, these uh, unusual phenomena actually act independently of each other. What this means is that, so if there is an aurora right here on the northern side of Jupiter, Whenever the other side of Jupiter, in other words, the southern pole in this case, uh, becomes sort of dark and is not facing the sun, this aurora disappears. So they actually are totally independent of each other, which is not something we understand very well, because on Earth, the aurora on one side of the planet will always result in the opposite side having them as well. But on Jupiter, it doesn't seem to happen. This can happen without this ever occurring, which means that the mechanism for aurora formation on Jupiter and also the mechanism for making them so powerful is totally beyond our understanding. We have no idea why, how, and what's happening here. So this is something that uh, Juno mission is actually going to be studying because we've already studied the radiation field right here. I'm actually going to remove the rings here. This is what the radiation field of Jupiter looks like. This is the radiation field formed by the magnetosphere. Uh, in our, um, around our planet, this is also known as the, the Van Allen's belt. Um, but here, the magnetic field is what we don't really get. We don't understand how the aurora and the uh, magnetic field interact on this beautiful planet. And by the way, you can actually just remove all of this and take a look at just Aurora. And there is the northern one. And there is the southern one. But like I said, they seem to be independent of one another. These are actually based on actual photos that Juno mission took. And what's really cool about this particular simulation known as NASA's eyes is that you can totally go and find out what um, apparatus is used for what discovery. So here we can take a look at microwave radiometers and it kind of gives you the brief overview of what these actual tools are, what they do on Juno and how they look in real life. This is actually something that uh, the previous missions and previous uh, apps didn't really have in NASA's eyes. And here I really like how they made it very explanatory, very clear at what's doing what and how it works and what's inside. Pretty cool uh, addition to this already awesome free app. Anyway, back to Jupiter. So, for the most part, that's kind of uh, all we've discovered so far that is revolutionary and mind-blowing because we thought we understood gas giants kind of a little bit, but turns out we really don't know what's going on and how things are working there and what causes them to be so very strange, so powerful and so unusual. Now, the purpose of this mission is, of course, to study the atmosphere, to study the magnetic field and to also study the internal parts of Jupiter, uh, which is what this mission is going to be all about in the next few years. And within the next few years, we'll hopefully learn a lot more about gas giants, understand them a lot better, which will obviously help us to not only prepare for a colonization of the moons of Jupiter, but also possibly colonizing the planet itself by building all kinds of really cool cloud cities like in Star Wars. Well, anyway. That's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned something about our beautiful neighbor Jupiter. And hopefully now you know what we've discovered very recently in 2017 and the mysteries that these discoveries have created. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.